Luke Tilly, judging by this week's trading, the volatility we saw in the market this summer did not end on Labor Day. So what's it going to take for the market turbulence to stop? Will it be Chinese stability or a Fed move finally? What's it going to take? I think that a lot of the volatility is coming from uncertainty on both of those things, both on how strong the Chinese economy is and, of course, when the Fed is going to start hiking interest rates and sort of at what pace. So I think that those are the key things to resolving some of the uncertainty and instability. Well, let's start with China first. What's the real state, in your view, of the Chinese economy? Well, at Wilmington Trust, we don't think that the growth in China is nearly as strong as their projected numbers, the 7% year-over-year growth. But it, we don't think that it's uh, so weak that it would be called a hard landing or a recession or something like that. Uh, a lot of the volatility right now, we think, is because of a lot of uncertainty about that when the export numbers came in so poorly in August, uh, and then also their uh, production index is coming in. Uh, a lot of investors, I think, being a little bit more worried that they're entering a hard landing uh, situation. And what's the real impact of the Chinese economy on the U.S. economy? Clearly, they're causing a lot of problems in Southeast Asia. We saw Brazil having problems because they heavily uh, rely on sending their iron ore over to China. They just got cut to junk today. So, but what's the impact of China on us? Well, our direct trade relationship with China is not very large in terms of the share of our exports that go to them as a share of GDP is not very large at all. But I don't think that's really the driving force behind uh, the nerves about China. Of course, they're the second largest economy in the world. And to the extent that if it was true that they were going through a hard landing, uh, then that would be a slowdown for global growth. And of course, that does have real impacts for equities around the world. And it used to be that a Fed rate hike would absolutely slaughter emerging markets. Everyone's worried about a Fed rate hike right now. The August uh, employment numbers did not help people in the guessing game as to when the Fed's going to move. So give me your best guess. Well, we're currently expecting the Fed to start hiking rates in December, not at the September meeting. Although the September meeting it really is a, a viable option. We wouldn't be too surprised if they actually started then. Ultimately, we think it comes down to how the members of the committee think about inflation expectations. Because uh, if they believe the survey-based measure, surveys of economists, then they believe that inflation expectations are fairly stable at 2% over the next couple of years. But if they're looking at the market-based measures, the, uh, the inflation break-evens, those are much lower. So I think it's going to come down to a debate over that. All right, so let's put it all together. Uh, what should investors be thinking about heading towards the end of the year? Let's start with stocks. Well, we're still in a uh, overweight to risk assets because we believe that the underlying fundamentals of the U.S. economy are still fairly strong when we look over a 9 to 12 month horizon. Certainly there will be a little bit more volatility going forward, we believe, because of the resolution of the timing of the Fed rate hikes and uh, figuring out what's going on in China. Uh, but we're still a little bit overweight to risk assets and equities and a little bit underweight to fixed income. All right. Can you give me some sectors you like on the stock side? Yeah, certainly. We're overweight uh, financials and healthcare and technology. You know, they're pro-cyclical sectors, and uh, we're sort of in the late stages of the, uh, the cycle here. But given uh, how long the cycle is expected to be, we expect it to continue going for several more years. That's what we like right now. And on the fixed income side, uh, do you have any feeling about, for example, high yield, which really sold off last year because of worries about energy? Yeah, so there's, some, there's certainly some concerns there, but fixed income, it's really hard to find uh, healthy returns there, which is the reason we're more into equities and risk assets. Uh, with the Fed tightening cycle, we do believe it's going to be fairly slow and gradual. So the returns on the fixed income side are going to be pretty meager for quite some time. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Luke. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.